Thank you very much, Asanteni Sana, ladies and gentlemen of the press. Uh, we are here as Nairobi City County Assembly members uh, to give a press statement on the happenings that have been going on in uh, this Nairobi and what we have observed. We have a few pointers that we will be able to give to you for you to deduce. First and foremost, ladies and gentlemen, in the first few weeks, Nairobians have witnessed a resurgent Mike Mbuvi Sonko behaving like a wounded cat pursuing revenge. One wonders why the governor is having all these outbursts and theatrics, considering His Excellency the President saved him from impeachment. Fortunately, we are not strangers to these theatrics. We were all here when the governor has failed to deliver on his mandate and signed off the key functions of Nairobi County government to the national government. This came as a relief for many Nairobians whose dwindling hopes were renewed with the creation of Nairobi Metropolitan Service. Sonko should save us from his dishonesty, his fraudulence, his deceitfulness and his treachery and allow Nairobians to move on. He is on record pleading and begging His Excellency the President to assist him in running the city and rescue him from cartels. It is disheartening and disrespectful to the President of the Republic of Kenya for Sunko to allude and purport that he signed the agreement while intoxicated at State House. It is common knowledge that Sonko signed the main deed of transfer and later signed an addendum. Is he saying that he was under the influence on two different occasions? Is he always under the influence? Is he saying that State House is a brewery? Is he saying that the president endorsed drunkenness while signing such an important document? A leader who is not ashamed to accept in public that he acts under the influence of alcohol or other substances should not be allowed to even chair a village cattle dip committee, leave alone being governor of a very important capital city. Ladies and gentlemen, we take this opportunity to demand that Sonko apologizes to His Excellency the President, he apologizes to the entire nation and to Nairobians. Sonko should recall that were it not for the President's votes, he could not have attained the 800,000 votes that he brags about. So while you're saying that Sonko only has about 100,000 votes because the President got 793. Indeed, NMS under the leadership of Major General Mohamed Badi has not disappointed and the turnaround in service delivery in Nairobi cannot be understated. Within only a hundred days of existence, we have seen a complete transformation of the CBD. Water is no longer a pre-election promise, with over 200 boreholes already drilled in Nairobi. Mokuru slums will no longer be the same. One can now fish in Nairobi River. Mishuki Park has been redeemed. The Grogon Road is almost complete and grabbed public utilities are being reclaimed. The General has also promised a lot in areas of transport and health, where each sub-county is going to have a hospital by close of the year. With Badi's 100 days track record, we have a reason to believe again. Certainly, with all these NMS achievements, the drama king in form and style of Sonko and the cartel surrounding him, of course, are not pleased. It is not all lost for Nairobians. The four functions that were transferred constitute of 80% of the annual county budget. These are funds that were being swindled by Sonko through briefcase contractors and garbage collectors. Aware that he will no longer control this expenditure of these funds, Sonko and his cartels have sensed danger. They are now fighting back. Sonko has unleashed all his arsenals on each and every one who supports NMS and Major General Badi. We have seen him threaten to withdraw from the deed of transfer. One wonders whether Sonko even knows how to withdraw from the agreement that he confessed he does not even know how his signature got there. In full knowledge of the role of the county assembly and in protecting and legitimizing NMS, Sonko, with the help of some state house operatives, are now trying to dis destabilize the assembly operations. Having realized that our speaker, Honorable Beatrice Elachi, is an ardent supporter of NMS 
and His Excellency the President's desire to transform the city, Sonko has bribed, bribed a few MCAs to coerce Honorable Elachi with threats of impeachment. Some of the MCAs who you see yapping around that they will impeach Speaker Elachi have never even uttered a word on the floor of the assembly. If they don't know the simplest procedure of requesting for a statement on the floor, how will they even know the procedure and the threshold required for impeaching a speaker? We know that Governor Sonko, in his wild attempt to impeach on Rabule Lachi, is exploiting the harsh economic times that MCAs are going through, through COVID-19 and uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and the closure of Assembly's CBK account at the behest of Sonko himself. He MCA's signature with 50,000 shillings. We are saying to them, bring it on. We know that Sonko's accounts have been frozen, so he doesn't have money. And now he is using liquor licensing board funds and the disaster management funds to facilitate his schemes. We want the officers who are aiding and abetting looting of public money that is meant to support healing of alcoholics and other community-based initiatives that we are coming for them. We also request the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission to investigate these accounts and the officers who hold these accounts. Attempting to impeach Elachi is like trying to cut a mugumo tree with the proverbial razor blade. We want to inform all those who care that Honorable Elachi is here to stay because she has stood with the interest of Nairobians by fully supporting NMS, which is being fought by Sonko. The numbers, we have the brains and we have the machinery to protect our speaker from these vultures in Nairobi. As right-thinking MCAs, we want to warn Sonko and his sympathizers that we have run out of patience with them. He should detest from interfering with both NMS and the assembly and concentrate with fighting his corruption cases in court. He collapsed his county executive and he should leave other institutions alone. As we speak, we sympathize with Sonko's executive since they, there is absolutely nothing that is happening there. The CCs have been reduced to hanging out in Upper Hill, taking tea in Upper Hill the whole day without doing anything. Yet they are drawing salaries. In fact, Sonko should capitalize on the provisions of the recently amended County Governments Act and appoint a deputy governor to assist him in the running of the peripheral functions that he was left with. As an assembly, we are now fully focused on supporting NMS to realize development in our wards. We are happy that NMS and its directors are embracing the assembly by responding to our inquiries thanks to the sober uh, leadership of Honorable Beatrice Elachi.